Welcome to Thermodynamics. Uh, today we're going to be talking about aspects of the Moran et al. textbook, and we're going to work through uh, the ideal ranking cycle uh, and go a little bit beyond that and, and point out uh, how to solve problems with ranking cycles in the class. But before we do that, there's an aspect of the ranking cycle that I want to point out to you, and that is this approximation of the work done by the pump. And so you're going to see a rate of work done per mass flow, uh, both with the dot over them, so they're a rate flow. Uh, the approximation is what we're going to use, which is we're going to use the specific volume times at state 3 times the difference between the pressure at state 4 and the pressure at state 3 in units of megapascals. So if I look at that, I have a unit of meters cubed per kilogram for volume, that is an intensive value, and uh, megapascals, also an intensive value for pressure, which will give us, um, ultimately, uh, what we're looking to get to is kilojoules per kilogram. So let's see how we do that. One megapascal in a unit conversion is going to be 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared. And one kilojoule is going to be 10 to the 3rd newton meters. So this is just something that you can look up uh, on standard conversion tables. I'm, I'm putting it up front for you right now. Now, um, if I have some volumetric value in units of meters cubed per kilogram, and that's for state 3. I'm going to need to multiply in a unit conversion of 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared per megapascal. I'm basically taking the equation, the yellow equation on the left and turning it into a ratio for unit conversion. I'm going to multiply the unit conversion for kilojoules related to 10 to the third newton meters next. Then I'm going to multiply those two conversions times my pressure value of megapascals. So it's an, and you'll see that in doing these, these steps, what's going to happen is the megapascals will cancel in units. The, uh, the newtons cancel the meters cubed all cancel and you're basically left with only kilojoules in the numerator per kilogram in the denominator. Now it's a non-trivial kind of uh, application of, of unit conversions so I think it's important to point it out to you in steps here up front because we're going to be using it uh, in the following examples. All right let's get started. So we continue with chapter 8 of Moran. You should have that available on Canvas uh, through library resources. And before we get going into that, let's do a little bit of language review. This is review from the uh, both the Moran article and, uh, chapter and the work in Koretsky that we've been going on. So that we know that the critical point is has a mathematical definition. It is the partial. Uh, it is partial change in pressure with respect to partial change in the intensive volume. And this, this uh, bar V is, is clearly uh, meters cubed per mole. But that partial change with respect to the critical temperature. And that is equal to zero as well as the second partial derivative with respect to P and V. Uh, what happens above the critical point is, or above the critical temperature, we don't have a fluid uh, that can be changed into a liquid. It, it's all a, it, essentially a, um, a single phase fluid. It can't be phase changed above the critical point. Basically, we're talking about a, a critical fluid at that point. But below the critical point, remember, a critical point uh, data can be found in the back of almost every steam table. Uh, the, the below that critical point, though, is the vapor dome. And so one thing that we're going to bring out is the idea that vapor itself, the word vapor, is a subcritical. It is a below the critical point fluid. And it is composed of dry vapor, and, or there is dry vapor and there is wet vapor. And wet vapor is a mixture. So it's a mixture of saturated liquid 
plus dry vapor, and uh, it's what we deal with when we're doing quality estimations in the under the vapor dome. Now the um, the superheated vapor is going to be the dry vapor that is um, basically far from condensing. Okay, so, so we're talking about vapor that is be beyond the vapor dome. Uh, it still is below the critical area, so it's subcritical, but it is effectively all a, a dried vapor. Now, the saturation temperature is going to be the boiling point. Okay, saturation temperature, that word saturation is the phase change of the liquid to the vapor. So we will label that T-sat. Whereas the saturation pressure is going to be the boiling point in terms of units of pressure. So P-sat is used in that case. So again, this is the liquid vapor uh, phase change. And T-sat and V-sat are going to be the temperature and pressure at which phase change occurs from liquid to vapor or from condensing from uh, vapor to liquid. And, and again, you know that these two are temperature and pressure are coupled, they're married together, especially when you have two phases. When you have a mixture of a saturated liquid and a dry vapor, you have two phases. If it's all H2O, one component, uh, so you have one degrees of freedom, one lookup table value. The, the liquid itself, like liquid water, would be called a compressed liquid or an incompressible fluid. It is a, a liquid where the temperature is below Tsat, and again, we've also called this a subcooled liquid before. So feel free to come back to this uh, board and review literature or review, review language uh, from your reading as we move forward. So, um, in the Rankine cycle, we're really looking at the, the, vape, the vapor liquid equilibrium and the change from a saturated liquid to a wet vapor and then on to a saturated vapor and then on to a dry superheated vapor. So the uh, saturated liquid itself as a term is just the edge of the vape, the left edge of the vapor dome, whereas the saturated vapor is going to be the right edge of the vapor dome in a uh, temperature entropy uh, diagram or a pressure volume diagram. So you're on the edge of the vapor dome. You're you are on that line. You're considered a, a saturated vapor. Between the lines under the vapor dome, you're dealing with a wet vapor, a mixture of dry vapor and liquid. So here's a phase diagram of pressure versus temperature, and you're seeing the uh, the units in Kelvin for temperature, just to make sure, and we've got pressure units of megapascals. This is coming out of Wolfram Alpha. You can uh, check that out anytime. I would like you to pay attention to that red curve between the triple point and the critical point as we continue looking at this. So essentially, I'm going to take a point P1, a pressure point P1, the critical point on, on the uh, Koretsky plot from figure E1.2 uh, maps the top of this uh, vapor dome over to that single critical point at the top of the red curved line. The pressure is well below the critical point, and in turn, because temperature and pressure are coupled along that line, the temperature is lower as well. And here on the other one, on the other plot, on the Koretsky plot, you're going to see the pressure volume plot has an isotherm where the temperature is equal to T1 at P1. Your job is to find out the vapor liquid, well, find out the quality in the vapor liquid equilibrium, and it's going to be a value between 0 and 1, and it will be positive. So um, the Units that you use for calculating quality will always cancel, and as long as I'm using an intensive variable for this process, and that could be specific entropy, that could be specific energy, that could be specific enthalpy, and it could be specific volume or, or molar volume as it's presented here, 
uh, all of those can ultimately solve the problem of quality. Before going much further, you're going to see some diagrams in the chapter, which uh, here you're seeing a temperature entropy diagram, temperature on the y-axis, uh, specific entropy uh, in units of, of Kelvin per, or uh, excuse me, in units of uh, joules per Kelvin per kilogram on the y-axis. This is a uh, classic, the one, two, three, four, back to four A to back to one cycle, that's the classic ideal ranking cycle, going from 1 prime to 2 prime to 3 to 4 to A and back from 1 to 1 prime is the superheated ideal ranking. But the, the, the plot itself is a plot of, of temperature entropy space, TS space. And the green dome, that represents our vapor dome, notice that the lines uh, the constant lines are the parametric part of the plot right now is pressure. So you're seeing iso isobaric lines of pressure in going from 4 to A to 1 to 1 prime. Uh, similarly, 3 to 2 to 2 prime and on up, t tilting up into the superheated space, is a constant pressure as well. Now if I, I, pl I plot what, you've, what uh, you may not have seen before, which is flipping out entropy and, and, and instead looking at uh, molar volume, the plot will have a, a, in TV space, will have a very similar parametric curve of pressure that slopes effectively upwards to the, to the uh, upper right quadrant as you follow along. And of course, when you're in the vapor dome, in, under the vapor dome, you see that both pressure and temperature are constant, and so Tsat and Psat go together hand in hand. The different variant on this is like a pressure volume diagram. This is what we started with in the beginning of all of our thermodynamic uh, tables for the vapor-liquid equilibrium. So this is pressure volume space, and specifically uh, based on Koretsky's notation, pressure specific volume space. And so I have a, a parametric plot of the isotherm inside of my pressure volume plot. And Tsat and Psat, once again, are, are equivalent under the vapor dome, where I have two phases, one component, and thus one independent intensive variable. The last plot that I wanted to show you is temperature versus enthalpy. That's H for enthalpy. That is, in, is our second energy-based state function. And uh, temperature enthalpy diagrams are also uh, quite prevalent. But notice how, it, the again, temperature is on the y-axis, and so the parametric plot is of pressure, and the pressure, or the isobar plot, is uh, sloping upwards to the right, whereas the parametric plot of temperature slopes down to the right. <clears throat> the entropy change, just as a reminder, is uh, based on uh, the the, we either have an ideal process, which would be isentropic, where ds would be equal to dq over t, or we have an irreversible process where ds is greater than dq d over t. Um, a reminder that we define the constant pressure heat capacity as the partial change in enthalpy with respect to the partial change in temperature at constant pressure. Now, um, when we want to solve problems for the ranking cycle, basically we are looking for the value of a specific enthalpy in units of kilojoules per kilogram and uh, just specifying the unit difference uh, in notation between Koretsky and Moran right up here. Um, enthalpy captures two very important things for our phase change and temperature change that occurs to water and steam. It capture, enthalpy captures sensible heat and latent heat. Uh, and by that, we can uh, get a lot of information out of just an enthalpy term. Now, um, enthalpy is, uh, has a, a basic mathematical relationship between internal energy as H is equal to U plus P times V. This is not an 
integral form. This is not a differential form. This is a mathematical relationship between enthalpy and internal energy. The qual quality itself is going to be uh, addressed using the enthalpy in this particular equation is going to be addressed using the enthalpy of the saturated liquid uh, and the enthalpy of the saturated vapor and X becomes the vapor quality. This is one way of writing uh, a solution to an unknown enthalpy or an unknown intensive variable using vapor quality. And remember it's the vapor quality which mean it means when the vapor quality value is zero you have a saturated liquid when the vapor quality is 1, you have a saturated vapor or 100% vapor. High quality vapor has more vapor, less liquid. The second equation is basically rewriting the same equation as above, only I'm writing it in terms of uh, the saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference between the vapor, saturated vapor enthalpy and the saturated liquid enthalpy. That's a real, that second equation is a very common way to write the equation. It's, it's one that I use quite regularly when I'm describing to you the way that quality can be calculated uh, analogously to counting on a number line. Okay, so what do we got to do to get to enthalpy? Well, we need to find out what our temperature and pressure constraints are in our, in our given process. We need to sketch a temperature entropy diagram. And this is really going to be different because you, you are going for enthalpy, but how do you get there? You get there through finding specific entropy. Okay. Uh, when you're doing your homeworks, you will have to sketch your uh, temperature enthalpy, or excuse me, temperature entropy diagrams. If you do not, you will lose points and you will also demonstrate that you likely do not know what is going on uh, in a ranking cycle. This is one of those things where drawing the plots of the behavior of the cycle actually uh, is part of the learning process. Then you find the quality of the wet vapor, uh, that is the, the mixture of liquid and dry vapor. You find the quality of the wet vapor at state, say, 2, and you, under, you understand that you're going to use an isentropic process to break this code. You're going to assume that a vertical line means an isentropic process in the plot, and quality becomes a form of interpolation. Um, ah, that's a good point. Uh, so we want to actually find the quality of the dry vapor, but um, the, the actual mixture will be a wet vapor. So moving on. Then we look up in the steam tables any of our particular values based on the, the saturated liquid and the saturated volume terms, and uh, look them up as a function of temperature, pressure, and quality. We interpolate any intermediate values, and uh, including when we're doing superheated steam. So you're using entropy and the diagram to find quality. You use quality to then look up values that are very important to you, such as enthalpy or other volume terms and, and the like that are intensive in the back of the table. Let's uh, look at that. So um, one thing I will ask you to do, and I will ask you to uh, work through example 8.2, or, or excuse me, we, we will be working through 8.2. I'm going to ask you to work through example 8.1, the ideal ranking cycle, and that will ultimately bring this back closer to uh, kind of a deeper understanding of, of how to solve your homework problems. So we're going to look at a, a vapor power cycle. That's just a steam cycle. It's a ranking cycle. And it's going to have that, those same components from going from one, the state 1 to state, uh, in this diagram, 2S, is the ideal isentropic uh, process of a loss of enthalpy going through the turbine. That is going from state 1 is superheat, or hot, or excuse me, saturated steam that goes through the turbine, drops in temperature, drops in pressure, and simultaneously does that process in an isentro isentropic manner. So the change in entropy is zero. Then you're at state 2S and you are going to solve for quality at that lower temperature and pressure. So let's look at how this works out. Um, we've got a turbine, we've got a pump. Both the turbine and the pump have vertical lines 
Uh, that is 1 to 2S is uh, the process through the turbine. 3 to 4S is the pumping process through the uh, liquid pump. Uh, they have, uh, in this particular case, we are going to do what is called a real ranking cycle analysis. So the ideal would be these straight up and down vertical lines that you see in the plot. We're going to take one step further and look at the, uh, the dashed lines that are moving to the right. So from state one to state two, we see that there is an increase in entropy. State one and state two, to go there, I have to increase entropy. And similarly, going from state three to state four, I also have to increase in entropy. Now what I'm looking at, and again, I highly recommend working through these calculations as you're uh, listening or as you go back in the textbook uh, and uh, work through this problem. So steam is going to be our working fluid, and uh, the turbine pumps in our knowns have efficiencies of 85%. The interesting thing here is that is an isentropic efficiency. That is very different than a thermal efficiency. So the, the system itself might have a thermal efficiency in, somewhere between 30 and 40% for the whole ranking cycle power generation. But the isentropic efficiency, that's more like a correction factor to turn an ideal cycle into a real cycle where entropy increases. So let's look at that. The working fluid goes to the boiler and the condenser at constant pressure. So, so the boiler and the condenser are going to be, uh, so we're going to pump the energy up into the boiler, and it's going to go up at a constant pressure until I finally get to state one. That is all one pressure. That is an isobar. And similarly, uh, the pressure going through the condenser from state two to state three is happening at constant pressure, as we could see with another isobar right here, just like I had in the slides uh, or the boards earlier. Okay, so those guys are going at constant pressure. So from point four to point four A to point one, that's all eight megapascals of pressure. Okay, that's that's a basic assumption that we're going to to take. Now, uh, saturated vapor enters the turbine. That's saturated, meaning it is right on the saturation line. And the turbine and pump operate adiabatically. Okay, so as a reminder, adiabatic means Q is equal to zero. And if the change in S has a, through the Clausius inequality or the Clausius equality relationship, if the numerator is equal to zero, then the change in entropy is equal to zero. So an adiabatic process in this case is going to be an isentropic process. And then we're going to modify that process with an efficiency of 85%, with a isentropic efficiency of 85%, or a, a correction factor to make the process model a real ranking cycle. All right, kinetic and potential energy effects are negligible. That means we're, not, we're, we're keeping the basic uh, first law of thermodynamics working and we don't have uh, uh, aspects of gravity or the Earth spinning through the universe tied into this. Quick unit conversion, a megapascal is going to be 10 bar, so 8 megapascals is 80 bars, 0 0.008 megapascals is 0 0.08 bar, which is going to be useful looking up data in the table. So I've already done those lookups, I've gone back to uh, uh, the equivalent tables uh, of, of steam of saturated steam and found out that the enthalpy at, of the vapor at 80 bar is going to be H1 and that's going to be equal to 2,758 kilojoules per kilogram. So there's those units of kilojoules per kilogram that we're going to need uh, to keep an eye on. Now the entropy units are intensive as well and that's kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And that's going to be a value of 5.7432. Now, one of these things is to keep in mind is as you're running through these calculations, especially when you have values in a denominator, you do not want to throw away decimal points, uh, significant values, when you have 
uh, small numbers in your denominator because you will end up with more of an error. So if you have four values, uh, of, you're out to the 10,000th decimal point. Keep using it, when it's, especially when it's uh, part of a value in the denominator. So there's that adiabatic isentropic relationship between uh, state 1 and state 2. State 1 operates at a pressure of 80 bar. State 2 is, a, op, is, is an energy address of the state at 0 0.08 bar. Now, because the process going from 1 to 2, which is this diagonal line, is going from 1 to 2, because that process is isentropic, you can equate S1, the state 1 specific entropy, to S2. And then we go right on in to a quality calculation for state 2. And that's why I've got x2 written down here, and that's why in my numerator I have s2 written uh, for my entropy value. The rest are going to be, so s2 has been found simply through an isentropic relation, and I can look up SL, SV, and, uh, or SL and SV, the saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific entropy values, just going back to the table, be sure that you look up the entropy values for the pressure of 0.08 bar. If you look up S2 using the entropy values of 80 bar, you're going to get a value that is going to be SL minus SL, which is 0, divided by SV minus SL, which is the very large value. So you're effectively going to get a value of a quality, excuse me, of 1, which is the saturated uh, vapor. Excuse me, S, that would be SV minus SL, which is uh, the largest value you can get, divided by SV minus SL. So once again, you're getting an, uh, a quality value of 1 when you're at state 1, because that's the quality. And state 2, if I look at this as a number line, I should expect that state 2 is going to be somewhere around 70-80% of the way to the, uh, to the absolute dry vapor. And so I find out that, in fact, the calculation gives me a quality of uh, 0.6745. And I should state out here that, let's see if I've got that in there. Oh, yeah, there's my correction that I was looking for. We were doing this calculation for 2S, and we're going to correct that 2S for the isentropic efficiency in the next step. Now, the thing about isentropic efficiencies, they're always leaning to the right. They're always a line that is, is sloping off to the right because you are increasing entropy in an irreversible process. Okay, so this is the great thing. You can solve quality using any ver in intensive variable. You can solve quality for internal energy, for uh, specific volume, for anything. And that's what we're doing here. So uh, we're going to use entropy to solve for quality, and we're going to use that quality term to then find out what the enthalpy term, that energy term is, because the energy term tells me about sensible heat and latent heat. Um, H2S, again, this is the ideal process, is isentropic is uh, if we look at example 8.1, this is again why I would like you to work example 8.1, you're going to find out that that enthalpy out of a, uh, out of a, a back calculation from using quality is going to be uh, 1,798 or 94.8 kilojoules per kilogram. The, and that's going to be a lower en enthalpy term than the enthalpy at state 1, which in example 8.1 was a value of 2,758 kilojoules per kilogram. So we can see that H1 is greater than H2S, correct? Which is what we'd expect. We'd expect hot, high, intensity, high energy steam going into the turbine and lower energy wet vapor coming out. The uh, correction for ideal, which is the isentropic process, from H1 to H2S, to real, which is going to use the 85% the uh, isentropic efficiency correction, is going to be done 
uh, at, in this step right here. So we, we're going to see that uh, at state 2 we're at 0 0.08 bar, whether we're at state 2 or state 2s, correct? And so it's a slight increase and we're going to find out that we're going to use the uh, 173.88 uh, kilojoules per kilogram, multiply it times the quality value, which was 0.6745, times the, uh, the difference between the saturated vapor and the saturated liquid. Oops, let me just double check that. This 173 value, as you'll see uh, in... Uh, eight, problem 8.1 or example 8.1 is going to be the low energy value of the saturated liquid whereas this value here 2403 that is the difference between H2 the uh, large value of the saturated liquid and the low value of the saturated vapor Okay, so that's a, a difference shown there Right. So from there, uh, state three is, so we've, we're, we are solving for state, we solved for quality in state two and the isentropic efficiency change. Now we're going to look at state three going from across that isobar. And I could actually just pull out the saturated liquid term from the table. So H3 is going to be uh, just the vapor or the fluid in Moran. F for fluid is the same as uh, uh, for liquid. Oh, I should have corrected that to liquid. So the, the liquid and the fluid are the same value. So we have seen this before in uh, a basic calculation for state H2S, as I've just shown you right there. Now, so I, I, I look up state 1 from a table. I can look up state 3 from a table. The only thing I need to make sure of is that I'm getting the right saturation pressure out of each value. I can solve for state 2 using an isentropic process. S1 is equal to S2. Find the quality. Use the quality to then calculate the enthalpy. Use the enthalpy plus an isen, uh, isentropic efficiency to find out what the real value is, and that brings us to going from state 4 or state 4s using a pump. All right, so here's what happens. When I am thinking about state 4s in, in this plot that you're seeing here, that would be the equivalent to state 4, uh, the idea is that it, I'm pumping an ideal, uh, I I'm, I'm have an ideal pumping system, so there's an isentropic pumping going on. It is not irreversible process, an ideal process. The value of that work done is going to use the approximation of, of the specific volume times the pressure difference, and we're going to then divide that value by the isentropic efficiency. Again, this is not the iso this is not the thermal efficiency of the cycle. This is the isentropic efficiency of the pump or the correction factor. When I have a perfect pump, pump, that value of eta P, the isentropic efficiency, is equal to 1. So let's look at this. State H4 is going to be equal to H3, state H3, plus the amount of work done by the pump. So I'm going to have uh, an H3 value of 173.88 kilojoules per kilogram, and I'm going to add the... Uh, the 1.084 times 10 to the 3 meters cubed per kilogram value. Now that value alone, that's going to be in the table. I'm going to look up state V3. I'm going to look up V3 and I will get a value in terms of cubic meters per kilogram. And this brings us all the way back to the very first board that we were looking at where I know I need to convert meters cubed per kilogram into kilojoules uh, and, and, and into units that will ultimately multiply out by times megapascals to give me kilojoules per kilograms units so that I finally have the same units. So this is what I look up in the table. I look up 1.0084 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed per kilogram. That's a very small number, right? 
I've got my uh, conversion between megapascals and Newton, Newtons per meter squared, and my kilojoules conversion between kilojoules and 10 to the third Newton meters. This, uh, basically you, we ran out of space because this is a very long equation. This is multiplied by the pressure difference and the pressure difference should be in units of megapascals. And those megapascals will ultimately cancel out and we'll get kilojoules per kilogram as my energy units. And this last denominator is going to be an isentropic efficiency of 85%, which in engineering terms, we convert into a fraction and uh, represent it as 0.85. So that would give us our uh, non-ideal value of H4. And I will also point out here that this is the non-ideal uh, process where, uh, as opposed to the diagram right above, which uh, makes it look like 4 is an ideal process. So this point here is going to be 4s, and we are calculating a point that is shifted to the right. Okay? All right. And that pulls together all of the aspects of solving for a cycle because the next step is going to go the difference in enthalpies between H1 and H4 for the boiler. Oh yeah, and that's, that's my final conversion. So we're going to add an extra 9.5 kilojoules per kilogram on top of that to create the correct value of enthalpy uh, for uh, state 4, for the irreversible process of state 4, okay? Um, there are aspects here, oh, and there's the actual uh, value that I'm, I'm talking about, but I actually wanted to show you the unit conversion so that you can see the full work of what's going on. There are further aspects here in, uh, inside of Moran's uh, textbook where they talk about the rate of heat transfer, they talk about the thermal efficiency, that is the normal power efficiency that we're thinking of, and the power efficiency, or thermal efficiency, is again, not the isentropic efficiency. Uh, that's gonna be the difference between H1 and H2. That's gonna be the energy done as work by the turbine, minus the energy needed by work from the pump, divided by H1, minus H4, which is the amount of energy input, Q, that goes into the system in the boiler, right? All right, that much you've seen before. But what we find is that when I calculate that and I use those same values to uh, find the thermal efficiency, the efficiency of my real ranking cycle, so the ideal ranking cycle was a higher value than this in, in example 8.1, the real ranking cycle has an efficiency of 31%. And 31% is a significant drop from where we were at in example 8.1, which I'll, I will ask you to go back and make a comparison of. Because what you're gonna see is that it's gonna drop from 37% to 31%. And that becomes pretty significant, and that's what is happening. I am losing energy, I am dissipating energy to my surroundings because of irreversible processes. Okay? All right, so we've gone through the full ranking cycle. If you work through example 8.1, very easily done to get uh, similar uh, work to what you've seen here. This work ties in the isentropic efficiencies to solve for problems. And we've gone through state one to two, which is the first process through the turbine, state two to three, which is the condenser, state, which is the process going through the condenser, state <clears throat> three to four, which is the fluid, liquid fluid going through the pump, and four back to one, <coughs> excuse me, which is the energy of the uh, water getting heated back up to steam, going from four to A to one. Okay. The next time we get together. We're going to be looking at uh, ways that we can increase performance in our ranking cycles. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit that we can do, is, despite having irreversible processes, to ultimately increase our efficiency up towards that 37% uh, 
uh, that you were looking at for the ideal process in the ideal ranking pro cycle in uh, problem 8.1. Now again, we just went through the real ranking cycle in example 8.2. We're moving forward into looking at the superheated ideal ranking cycle uh, that can increase the quality of the system and can ultimately yield a higher performance cycle. And once again, the curves that you're seeing in Koretsky are actually superheated ideal ranking cycles. Uh, it is incorrectly stated that those are real ranking cycles. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for your time, everyone. Have a great day.